Today we're on the driving range trying to create draw bias in our driver. Should you create that draw bias with a club head or should you create it with your hosel adjustments? We're going to find out today. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a like, leave a comment and subscribe to the Second Swing YouTube channel. Hey golfers, I'm Drew Mahold of Second Swing Golf. Today I'm joined by Jackie Johnson, Master Club Fitter at Second Swing Minnetonka. Today we're out on the driving range. We've got two drivers with us today. Actually, Jackie's gamer is the TaylorMade Sim Max, and I've got the TaylorMade Sim Max D. Today we're gonna to talk about draw bias and the best way to create the draw bias. So, um, of course, Jackie, with your driver, there's hosel adjustments that you can use to create kind of a more upright line angle and maybe more bias to the left or uh, to draw bias. Yep. And I've got the Sim Max D club head, which because of the weighting in the club head creates more draw bias that way. So we thought we'd find out today and help golfers who maybe struggle with a slice to see what, what is the most effective way to create draw bias. So Jackie, I know, well, first of all, tell me about your game, how you hit tee shots. Do you have a draw? Do you have a fade? And um, what maybe have you been going to when customers need some more help uh, curving the ball to the left or stopping a slice? Yeah. Um I mean, first of all, I hit a fade. Mm -hmm. uh, very rarely try to hit a draw, so fade is more my uh, typical mm -hmm. hit. Uh, and as far as like customers that struggle to, you know, they're slicing the ball a little yeah. too much and putting them more into a fade bias club. Uh, yeah, you can do that a couple different ways. Uh, the the downfall is like, for example, sim max at a ten and a half degree. If I'm going to, you know, try and close the club face a little bit, you know, I'm going to loft the club up. Mm -hmm. So the issue with that is obviously going to be more height, yeah. right? And maybe too much spin. So that's where a more draw bias club with the weighted, uh, you know, designed to help with that is going to potentially be a little bit better fit, especially because we're not lofting up the club. So that's where we would go that route if, if mm -hmm. that was a situation we needed to address. Sure. So what we're going to do today is we're going to hit two uh, different settings in the Sim Max driver. Uh, both are kind of promoting a draw or more upright line angle. Um, and obviously those will be a little bit higher in loft, like you said, so we'll see some different numbers there. But then I also have a Sim Max D at 10 and a half degrees. We'll hit that just in the standard setting and see what that draw bias does compared to a Hosel adjustment. And um, we'll show you guys the track band numbers. So uh, Jackie, you're warmed up, ready to hit some tee shots here? Yeah, let's go. That's why I don't have mine up enough right now. You're hitting that solid though. Yeah. My tendency is to pull it if it's in this position, which is... Which is what's happening, so... Yes. That was off the toe. That's a good one. Yeah. All right, so Jackie, that was five with the Sim Max in the upright setting. So not necessarily manipulating the loft, but kind of just closing the face a little bit there. You had four left of center. You had kind of one that when you said you hit off the toe, that kind of leaked right. But um, what do you think of that setting? I know you commented there while you're hitting, like, this is kind of why I don't play it in this setting, because you were kind of closing the face a little bit. Yeah, um, at a dress, it's just a little different. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously it's more upright, so uncomfortable with that, I guess. Um, but yeah, in that setting, I tend to want to, you know, pull the ball yeah. more than create a draw effect. Yeah. Um, none of those shots I hit, even when they went left, were more a draw flight. It was just, I literally pulled them. Yeah, it's so, kind of a dead straight pull almost. And you yeah. actually had, on average, just because of that shot off the toe, I actually had an average of curve to the right with that one. So, yeah, right. Um, I mean, there's, we'll see how now, I mean, creating a draw, I mean, the draw bias, right, a lot of it is just making sure the club face isn't open and you're mm -hmm. not, especially for those players that do cut across the ball and have that kind of slice effect to it, is trying to eliminate that, which it did here, but not ideal for what you're looking for. Right. So it might get more uncomfortable for you now, though, because we're going to be lofting it up a little bit. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah. All right. Yeah. You're hitting it good. Yeah. 
very high. Yes. <laughs> to be expected. So, Jackie, five now with the upright setting and five with kind of the highest setting um, available for the Sim Max driver. Um, noticed, I think, a little bit higher ball flight the second time around, which was kind of what we expected because you're increasing the essential, well, essentially the loss of the driver. Um, you hit it 13 feet higher. Um, you did reduce curve to the right, though. So you kind of have less curve to the right, but you were pulling the ball again. So all five actually left of center this time with the Sim Max at the highest setting. So. What did you think about that one? Um, any other feedback that you had besides kind of those numbers there? Yeah, I mean, I hit those ones a little bit more solid, but yeah, you can definitely tell like at address that it's very close compared mm -hmm. to the last setting where the line go is just adjusted. So yeah. Um, yeah, it doesn't surprise me all went left of center. So. Right, yeah, I mean, it's it was, and distance wise, it's pretty similar. Your carry distance is very similar. You gained, you had four more yards on the upright setting, I think just because it wasn't as, as high. Yep. Um, and I know you kind of like to keep it a little bit lower than where you're hitting the, the highest setting. But um, so we've got kind of two. So we hit the upright setting with the Sim Max. We hit the highest setting with the Sim Max. Um, do you want to try Sim Max D now? Yep, let's go. That probably is now the new farthest one of the day. Oh, it's a little more spin than I thought. Never mind. I think these have all been very consistent. Yeah, a little bit. That might have been, I think that was the first one with noticeable curve to the right, though. So, Jackie, I wanted to ask you about the Simmax D club head knob because, I mean, there's, I think there's probably a difference in just the way it looks at address. Um, the club head probably has a different shape to it. So, did you notice that at the address or not really? Um. I mean, the one thing that I noticed was the face. I mean, it definitely looks a little bit more natural. It's not as manipulated as the okay. regular Max. Yeah. So um, the weighting in it just makes up for, you know, on the regular Sim, having to either go upright or, you know, opening or closing the face, Yeah. right? So like that is noticeable at address versus this is just already set up that way. So definitely can tell that out of the gate. Mm -hmm. Felt a little bit more comfortable over the ball. Whereas the other, with the other one and that manipulation wasn't as comfortable. Sure, sure. Um, to, looking at curve, so on average, this was the Sim Max D in just standard setting uh, at 10 and a half degrees, had the least amount of curve to the right. Actually, on average, it was 0 0.8 feet of curve uh, to the right. You had a couple went right, a couple went left, but the key is, you know, closing the club face more efficiently. Um, so the face angle on all of these so far has been within three degrees, but they're all closed to the target, mm -hmm. um, which is essentially what the goal of draw bias club head and then kind of the um, adjustable hosel settings are. Um, so now I think I'm curious now to see what would happen. Just hit your gamer, yep. hit your gamer, sim max, normal settings. Um, Cause I know you're not, you like to play a fade. You're not really playing these settings, but yep. in terms of I think a lot of golfers are struggling with slices, so this is kind of what yep. they look for. But let's just see how these now compare to what your standard setting in your gamer is. Sounds good. Oh, that's good. Yeah. A little high, but that's that's the flight you're probably used to having. Oh, yeah. That was good. Yeah. I mean, it, interesting what happens when you get back to your normal driver and you get more comfortable and then just like automatic so jackie that's your normal setting and we could clearly see the differences here so um, on the map you had you know i think uh, actually all four or five shots were left of center but they're within 10 yards of the center line, except for that last one there, you kind of pulled a little bit. But overall, I mean, you had four that were right down the middle with uh, your fade that you kind of like to hit. Mm -hmm. So on average, feet of curve was 40 feet to the right, which is what, like quick math, that's like foot 15, yeah. um, maybe 13 yards. Yeah. So I mean, that's the kind of fade the, that you're looking for off the tee. And it was also um, your highest carry distance as well. So you're getting a little bit more height out of that as well, actually with that fade a little bit more 
um, spin on it, which creates a little bit more uh, flight down the fairway. So, um, what did you think about that? Obviously, you, that's the, more, the setting you're most comfortable in. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it's kind of summarizing things what you thought we what happened today. I think we saw the most manipulation really was the the max d head yeah and its standard setting was kind of the most draw bias compared to the others well i think this is the conversation i mean that i have it with a lot of people because you know a lot of people want to create a draw but the reality is, is that a lot of the draw um heads they're really meant to just keep it from going right mm -hmm. right so like you're not gonna have that draw type flight m most of the time that doesn't mean that it can't happen but like in my instance i barely hit any draw shapes right. i was just i was just hitting like normal right like i'm not trying to hit the draw like if i were to get up and try to hit a draw i would manipulate my swing to do so right mm -hmm. so for someone that's just struggling going to the right i mean yeah draw type uh club head is definitely something to look at um i don't me personally, the reason why I have this club is pretty clear on yeah. the stats. Like I hit a fade, but it's it's a it's not a, it's a fade. It's not a slice. Yeah. So if someone's just slicing the ball versus fading it, definitely a, a draw type is going to be much better. If they're trying to you know create a draw mm -hmm. swing, I mean it's what you're really looking for. If you're just looking to keep it from going right, D type would be good. If you're looking at change the type of swing and the type of ball flight yeah that's more of a swing yeah thing that we you would that's fixing a, a swing yeah. you know and the way you deliver the club at impact right. versus club settings but um because i it's funny because i did yeah, i can show you now so i took out your sort of one pull and you can see there's your grouping for the your standard driver yep. and you had three right on top of each other and then one a little bit short yep. but clearly that's the best setting for you based yep. on dispersion and based on performance then we had, you know, the Sim Max D was kind of the most, uh, had the most out to the left, kind of, and also the highest setting with the Sim Max as well. Both of those were kind of left as well. Um, so, I mean, clearly there's ways to manipulate it, and there's, you know, those those settings on the hosel, also a, a draw type club head can help you stop your slice or reduce your slice um, in different ways. But it's important to know what the loft is when you manipulate the hosel. It's important to know how much draw bias can be created by just having more weight in the heel of the club head like with the max d head but um, it's important also to talk to a fitter like jackie yeah. here or somebody at one of our stores that can help you get dialed in um, and identify what of these settings or which of these uh, manipulations is right for your swing to create the best performance off the tee so jackie thanks for your feedback today bring in your driver with us today to, to tee up some shots but i think a lot of people will get some help from this yeah i think one last thing is just like if you're looking to create more of a draw but don't want a draw head, going with a little bit lower loft and then lofting it up is probably the better mm, match. Yeah. So like if you want to, you know, get a nine degree head and then loft it up two degrees to create sure. that draw, that'd be probably a little bit better bet um, mm -hmm. in terms of trying to keep the ball flight down so you don't yeah. lose a ton of distance. So that's not even something I thought of, but that's why that's why you're here today. Yeah. So uh, Jackie, thank you again for your insight. Uh, this was a good one.